Welcome everyone and today I'm gonna explore the probably the most controversial most confusing and uh, thing that has the most misconception in the photography world and that is crop factor so we're gonna explore what is crop factor what affects it and as you can see I have a practical setup so I'm gonna show you some examples as well how does it affect your photography so what's this mysterious crop factor well, to put it in simple terms, it's a ratio between different frame sizes. And I'm saying frame sizes because it applies for the analog era, just like the digital era as well. In the digital era, the baseline for this is this full frame camera, uh, which is the 135 or Leica frame, which is this one here. So how it started? I think basically when cameras started, they were like massive, big size. They used big plates, uh, light sensitive plates. To do the photography and as photography became more and more popular and accessible they tried to reduce the camera sizes just like we do it today uh, and it ended up with something like this this auto 110 from pentax which is a very very small this is the 110 which uh, i think is smaller than the micro photo sensor size so yeah it was known for being a little bit soft and uh, whatever and you will see why so back then I think uh, these ones, the medium format cameras were the most popular. The size of the frame is this one, like the viewfinder, it's six by six. So that means it's six centimeter by six centimeter. And then later on Leica was coming out, what we call today full frame, which is this one, as you can see here in this Sony. So if you compare the two, uh, you can see that your full frame doesn't really feel that full. And I see a lot of times that people, mostly full frame users, are mocking the micro four thirds or four thirds because of the size of the frame. And there's nothing new. It happened back then with the film era when Leica came out with the full frame. People using medium formats or large formats were mocking it for, oh, it's too small. What are you going to shoot? Stamps? Because that's the size of the sensor, isn't it? So, as you can see, mocking the smaller frames are nothing new, it's as old as photography. So how crop factor affects your photography? Well, that's where the misconceptions and misunderstandings start, because many people say that it affects your focal length, it affects your depth of field, and it affects your aperture. It's not. None of them are affected by crop factor. The only thing it affects, and I know you start typing now, that, but the full frame and the microphone, please hold on, Wait for the practical test and I will show you. So what it affects is your image circle. So a micro four thirds lens compared to a full frame lens, same focal length, will just project a smaller image. So the focal length is technically how far the lens has to be on from your focus plane to focus infinity. And the aperture is the ratio between your focal length and the input aperture size, the diameter. So if you look through the lens from the front, you can measure exactly how big that circle is and just divide the focal length with that and here you go, you got the aperture. So these are, as you can see, all physical hardwired properties. They not change. So think of composition as you have the exposure triangle. You have the shutter speed, the aperture and the ISO there and you can't change one without changing the other if you want the same exposure. Same here, the composition triangle. You have the focal length, you have the field of view and you have the sensor size. So you can't affect one without affecting the other if you want the same composition. So in a practical use, technically, if you want to have the same field of view, have the same composition, then if you go with a full frame 90 millimeter lens, then you have to go with a 45 millimeter on the smaller micro four thirds. Simple, because your frame size on both dimensions is the half. You have to have the half of the focal length as well as you would have on a full frame simple as that so full frame 90 is micro four thirds 45 and that's where the equivalency will come in and how does it affect your depth of field because that's one of the misconceptions that the crop factor on its own doesn't affect your uh, depth of field it will affect indirectly your depth of field so how it does is technically again we have to think of a triangle of the depth of field that it's affected by three things one is your focal length one is your subject distance and the other one is the aperture. 
So as you can see that if you want to have the same composition on a smaller sensor, you use a shorter focal length, you change the focal length. So that will affect your depth of field. And this is where the term equivalency will come in. And probably you've seen it a lot that this and that APS-C or Micro Four Thirds lens is equivalent to this and that on the full frame. So as I said, now the baseline is the full frame, the 35 millimeter, but why manufacturers are only showing the equivalency in focal length but not in the aperture and that's a very simple reason to it and just think of the three triangles we have the exposure the composition and the depth of field now equivalency will directly affect the composition isn't it because when you want to keep the same field of view on a smaller sensor you need to change the focal length so there the sensor size is directly affecting the focal length, hence they're showing it. But when it comes to exposure, there's no sensor size in there, or depth of field, there's no sensor size. It will not affect the exposure at all, and it will just indirectly affect your depth of field. So that's why manufacturers are not showing it as uh, this lens is equivalent. For example, this 4518 is equivalent to a 90 millimeter that's where they stop they don't say it's equivalent to a 90 millimeter f3.6 because it's not it's going to be still a 1.8 lens so when you go for the exposure it will be the same exposure as it would be in full frame and when it goes to depth of field if your subject distance is the same and your focal length is the same then you will have the exact depth of field so the upper with the same aperture so that's why this equivalency is, is more applied to focal length but not really on the aperture because aperture is not affected just the depth of field indirectly through the focal length so I hope this clears the confusion around crop factor and equivalency in focal length and aperture and why manufacturers are only showing the focal length it will also make a bit of confusion and it already creates because I see in many times that they say that micro thirds is no good because it needs more light and actually it doesn't because f1.8 is the same as a full frame or medium format or large format so you will have the same exposure and if companies will show that yeah this lens is equivalent to f3.6 then that will make it confusion so i need to change my iso or shutter speed but actually it doesn't so what are the advantages and disadvantages of the smaller frame size and I'm saying smaller frame size because it's not a micro thirds versus full frame. It could be full frame versus medium format, medium format versus large format, or micro thirds versus large format, why not? So you can see that these things is going on since the dawn of photography when the smaller 135 film frame was mocked by the medium format users. It's nothing new. But one disadvantage is the depth of field. So as you see, the frame size doesn't directly affect it, just indirectly through the focal length and the subject distance maybe. So you, if you want to go for the most blurred out, shallow, bokelicious background, then the way to go is medium format. And after that, the full frame, which is the most affordable right now. But talking about affordable, when it comes to lenses, the Micro Forte system has a lot of f1.2 lenses that are about the same price as a f1.8 often or an f1.4 lens on a full frame and they giving you pro quality lenses so weather sealed and all these things are, are just built in so as you can see it's not that hard to achieve a shallow depth of field with micro photos even this 1.8 45 millimeter lens gave me some really nice blurred backgrounds because the bokeh is not just about the quality the quantity of depth of field but the quality of the blur as well and micro waters has nothing to be shy of there but again if you want the most bookalicious background then yeah full frame is the way to go the other disadvantage is coming from the film era as well so for example this 110 was known for having not so good quality pictures and and medium format and large format was the absolute detailed champion and the reason behind this because how it worked that the film was kind of like uh, light sensitive crystals and the size of the crystal was making it 
how sensitive the film is so obviously on a larger surface you can put more crystals and uh, can have a little bigger size so the same works in the digital era with the size of the actual pixels so for example a 20 megapixel micro vortex has exactly the density of an 80 megapixel full frame so this 20 megapixel micro vortex with the exact same technology and that's very important and the exact same technology will be as noisy as our 80 megapixel would be on full frame but the reason why i'm mentioning technology because it's getting better and better so now this kind of uh, disadvantage is diminishing but it will be always there because whatever technology you, you can put in a micro photos you can put in the full frame and i think that's one of the reasons why micro photos have a bit bad reputation because APHC and full framers going ahead in technology a lot just think about uh, the backside illuminated sensors olympus om1 actually it's om systems now just catched up recently uh, for APS-C we have it since 2012 I think with uh, Samsung NX1 or with full frame we have it since 2015 or 16 with the Sony a7R2 so as you can see there is a, a, a lagging behind on technology and that could cause the micro photo has a bit of bad reputation making it noisier but it's not because of the frame size but because of the, the technology that is in the cameras it's catching up now but there's still a lot to go obviously so what are the advantages of the smaller frame size well the main one is the size and weight so when it comes to bodies they nearly the same size if you look at this olympus versus this sony because of the technology they have to put in they just can't do much with the body but there's a lot to do with the lenses because they have to cover a smaller image frame and the solar image circle they can be much smaller narrower and that means they're gonna be lighter so there is one advantage and I think that's the biggest one that is just so easy to carry around compared to to like a full frame system also it comes to the composition that to have the same composition you can go with a shorter focal length so again smaller size another advantage is the IBIS obviously a smaller sensor is easier to move around than a bigger sensor so simple as that the IBIS just absolutely fantastic on micro photos the Olympus cameras you can have like really really good handheld videos and photos not worry about it and also you can have uh, some features in the camera like the handheld high res shot in the em1 mark 3 and om1 it just makes things easier smaller size easier to move around you can do more precise movement simple so another advantage is the reach and uh, that's why many wildlife and bird photographers are liking the olympus and panasonic systems because compare the olympus 300 f4 with the Sony 600 f4 now obviously the Sony will give you a little narrower depth of field as we've seen before but it's not really important in wildlife but you can have the same uh, aperture so f4 f4 so you can have the same shutter speed and ISO but you have to carry a much smaller system which when you're hiking and, and trying to find these animals it makes a massive difference so as you can see size does matter another advantage for the smaller sensor size is coming for the exposure in two ways and let me explain you why there is this rule for exposure that if you use a 50 millimeter lens then you should use a 150 or even faster shutter speed so for example when i need to use a 50 millimeter on a full frame i can get away with a 25 millimeter for the same composition which means instead of 150 i can go with 125 to avoid the camera shake so you have already one stop there but if I want to go for the same depth of field so for example uh, when you're shooting landscapes you go down to f8 f11 you would be able to use instead of f8 f4 so that's already two stops so you can see that handheld you can get away with three stops combine this with the excellent image stabilization in the micro photo system and you can see that you can do a lot with handheld that you might not be able to do with the full frame so that's an advantage again 
for the smaller sensor size. Enough of the talking, let's go to the practical setup. So what I have here on this side is the camera fixed to the table with this Falcom clamp and I added my Benro gear head through this F50 Falcom system which I will review later and on the top we have the Tamron 90mm lens attached via this uh, very generic uh, lens collar. I choose adapter because as you can see I can quickly change between the two lenses and as you can see that the lens itself is fixed so I can keep the same object distance. So on the next side of the same table I have my subject here which is a calibration tool because it has this scale on the side that helps me to show you the depth of field difference if there's any. And it's attached to the table via this little plate that I'm using for mostly for macro photography uh, with Z mount from move shoot move and it's all fixed to the table with this strap and I just have this on the top of all of these. So as you can see this is a very very fixed setup so I can make sure that my subject distance never change. So for the first test I was shooting with the same lens, same subject distance, same aperture. So you can see that this is the Sony image and this is the Micro Four Thirds image. You can already see the composition difference especially if I uh, overlap them. So now the inner frame is obviously the Micro Four Thirds. So as you can see there is a big difference in the composition and that's because the Micro Four Thirds is cropped in. So obviously there's going to be a difference in composition. Just remember our composition triangle. But when I zoom on the scale and I put them next to each other. So here's a Micro Four Thirds on the left and the Sony on the right. You can see there is basically no difference and that's because remember the depth of field triangle so we have the same aperture same lens and same subject distance therefore my depth of field is exactly the same and it makes sense just think about it if you take the Sony photo and you crop it to the same as the Micro Four Thirds photo the depth of field will not change because it's the same photograph and it doesn't matter if you do the cropping in software or hardware the results will be the same so that's why the depth of field is not affected by the sensor size directly. So for the next one, I do the equivalency test. So this time I'm using the 45 millimeter on the Olympus and the 90 millimeter on the Sony. So 45 on micro photos, 90 on the equivalent focal length on full frame. So if I put the pictures next to each other, you can see that it's the same composition. Just But when I zoom into the scale, here you can see the difference. Now it's the same aperture, so both lenses are at f4. And you can see that the full frame wins. It's, there's no question about it that the full frame just looks more shallow, more uh, bokelicious than the Micro Four Thirds. For the next test, I was doing the real equivalency, so now the Micro Four Thirds is at f2 and the full frame is at f4. So now you can see that I got the same result both in composition and both in depth of field so uh, the reason is because simply i just changed the depth of field triangle and the composition triangle at the same time so this is where the equivalency comes in when it's uh, the 45 millimeter f2 is equivalent to 90 millimeter f4 so I hope this helps to clear the confusion, misconceptions, misunderstandings about the crop factor and how it works. So as you can see, it only affects your composition directly and through the composition, the focal length, it affects your depth of field. So what it means that it doesn't affect your aperture. So that's why when it comes to equivalency, we only talk about the focal length equivalency and we just mention the aperture equivalency because that's only for the depth of field not for the exposure so you have the same shutter speed same iso if you have the same aperture and as you see and you have the same depth of field as long you're shooting with the same lens from the same distance you just have a different composition so thank you for watching and if you like this video just give us a like and don't forget to hit subscribe so we can create more videos like this and see you on the next one